Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be covering succession. So first of all just to go through the definition of what succession is and it is the change in the ecological community over time. So the key thing is over time not over distance although most diagrams you see like the one you have here it does look like it's changing as it moves further back over distance. But what this is actually representing is one particular area or plot of land. This is what it looks like at one period of time. Then a certain period of time later, this is what it looks like. Another period of time later, it looks like this and so on and so on. And each of these stages, which they have numbered, is called a serial stage, which is S-E-R-A-L, so a serial stage. And that is when you see a noticeable difference in the community. And they've separated it into bare rock to begin with. Then you start to get small plants, so mosses and grasses. Then you get some larger grasses, woody plants and shrubs, some small growing trees, and then eventually, the climax community is the final serial stage. And this is when you don't see any other changes in the overall combination of species. And it always ends in a forest. But what type of forest does depend on the climate. So in England, it would be a deciduous forest with oaks. But in Scotland, because of the cold climate, it would still be a forest, but it would be with pine trees. So what we're going to look at is what actually causes these changes over time. And we call this a primary succession. So this is when you start off with bare rock and it does over time become a climax community with a forest. And the bare rock might be because of new land being created by an earthquake or a volcanic eruption. So the first species to ever colonise is called the pioneer species. So they are the first species which are colonising this bare rock. And that's what I'm showing you here in this diagram. This is rock. And on top, these white, grey, green looking structures that are flat against the rock are lichen. And lichen are able to survive on bare rock because they can withstand really, really harsh abiotic factors. And the reason for that is lichen is two different species coexisting together. And that's what we call a symbiotic relationship. Both species are bringing a mutual benefit. And lichen is made up of algae and fungus. Now the algae can photosynthesize and that's why it's got a slightly green color to it. And that means because it's photosynthesizing, it is creating glucose, carbohydrates, which it shares with the fungus. The fungus has two advantages. It can absorb water, a bit like a sponge. So when it rains, it can absorb and hold on to that water, whereas the rest of the rainwater is just going to run off the rock. So it can provide the water. Secondly, it can release enzymes outside of its cells, which is known as extracellular, and it releases them onto the rocks, which starts to break down the rock to release minerals. And that can then be absorbed by the algae and the fungi. So by those two species coexisting as lichen, they are able to survive, even though there is very little water available, there is um, no food source other than the light and there's no minerals apart from locked up in the rock. So that is why they can survive in the harsh abiotic factors. And because they can, there is next to no competition from other species. So lichen are really good at surviving and they are your pioneer species. Now, how they then change the abiotic factors to become less harsh is over time, these lichen will die and decay. Um, they'll also reproduce, so you'll constantly have lichen as more lichen are dying. And as they die and decay, that will start to produce a very, very thin layer of soil. And we call that humus, not to be confused with the dip hummus. So it is humus, 
And because you now have this thin layer of soil, that means mosses and smaller plants, seeds, can lodge into that thin layer and the soil will retain some water and minerals and that's where these plants can now survive. And then this process continues to happen. Those mosses and smaller plants, as they die and decay, they will increase the nutrient content and the depth of the soil. So you now have thicker soil with even more nutrients in and it can hold even more water, which means even larger plants with bigger roots are able to survive. Now, as this continues over time, each new species is changing the environment so it becomes um, less hostile, but also less suitable for the previous species. And that means the previous species does get outcompeted and may not be in that habitat anymore. So, for example, as those mosses and small plants start to grow, they will be covering up the lichen so they then no longer can receive sunlight and they will be outcompeted. So the final step then is known as the climax community because as this process happens over time you get your small shrubs, you then get small trees and then eventually you have this really really increased biodiversity. The abiotic factors are now favourable and the environment is more stable. And that is how we would class a climax community. And that is always dominated by trees. So that is your process of a primary succession and how the abiotic factors change over time. Um, and you end up with this increased biodiversity because by the final serial stage, the abiotic factors are so favorable it can support, the environment can support a whole range of different species, plants and animals, and lots of individuals within those species can survive as well. So a secondary succession is very similar, except this is when a succession that was already at potentially its climax community or earlier gets disrupted. And in this example, we can see a fire has occurred and burnt down all the trees, but it could be human destruction, so deforestation. It could be overgrazing by animals, or it could be some forms of natural disasters like flooding. Whatever the cause of the disruption, it always results in the plants and animals are destroyed and you're just left with soil. And then the succession happens again over time. But it's different from the primary succession because you are already starting at a point where you have soil. You aren't going back to bare rock. So that's what we mean by a secondary succession. Succession's happening there for at least the second time and you start from the stage with soil. So just to summarise some of the key points of what happens in succession. So species richness increases, which is the number of different species as well as the number of organisms. So we describe that as the biodiversity increases over time. As succession occurs, you also start to have larger plants and animals colonizing and surviving. And you get these more complex food webs. And this is why the whole environment is more stable. Because even if a small section of plants was destroyed, because you have so many different species and so many individuals, even if a small section is destroyed, the whole area should recover. So we have down here as well, just two other examples. The original pictures I showed you were starting on bare rock, but you do get succession at sand dunes on beaches as well. And instead of starting on bare rock, you start on bare sand. You still see these changes over time. The only key difference is the abiotic factors are different. So on a sand dune, the reason the abiotic factors are so harsh is there's a very, very high salt concentration from the ocean. There's very, very little water availability because sand is porous. So although you have the ocean just there, the water drains all the way through the sand. So your pioneer species is different on a sand dune succession. It's not lichen, it's xerophytes. And these are plants adapted 
to very, very harsh conditions where there's very little water availability. So you can see here, this is marram grass, but marram grass and lime grass are your two key xerophytes that you tend to see as your pioneer species on a sand dune succession. So the last thing that you could be asked to do with succession is how you can actively prevent succession from progressing through conservation and why we would want to do that. And it links to conservation. So humans, sadly, are one of the biggest causes in the destruction of habitats. And that means we are destroying several animals and plants' habitats, as well as their food sources, and that can lead to extinction. So that's why we are trying to prevent this, and this is often done through managing succession. So the reason that often this destruction happens is because as the human population grows, there is a need for more food, for more um, space, for housing, but also the timber can be used for resources in housing. So you have to come up with a compromise to be able to still provide the resources that humans need for survival without destroying all of the other plant and animal species. So that's what this bit focuses on. And one strategy they found is that if you try and manage succession, you can actually conserve a greater range of habitats. So, for example, we have in this picture coppicing. And that is when the trees in the climax community are not completely pulled out of the ground. But instead, you cut them down to the base. And the reason that this is effective is you then have all of this wood here for timber, which can be used for building products. But also, you now have an area where a whole range of different plant species will thrive. Because you can already see you've got lots of bluebells and grasses which can now thrive. Whereas in the Climax community, because they were potentially outcompeted, by the larger trees blocking the sunlight, they wouldn't have survived. And we do this directly next to the forest, so you now have two different habitats maintained, which provides a greater range of food sources and a range of habitats for different animals and plants, whilst also being able to provide the timber for fuel or furniture for humans. So that's one thing you could get asked. It's about this idea of preventing succession from developing all the way to a forest in every single area. So you can try and maintain the other serial stages to allow other animals to thrive. So that is it for succession and how it can be used in conservation. If you have found it helpful, please give this video a thumbs up.